Hi everyone, welcome back to the Zero to One Code. I'm Mr. Kumar, and in this video, we are going to talk about set error action in the OmniScript. Here, I'm going to create a new OmniScript. I'll name it as Set Error Action OS. Type, subtype, same thing. So now we have our own script created. So if you go to the action, we will see a set error action element here, right? So just to give you an idea, right, what set error does is that uh, it gives uh, or provide a capability to throw the errors uh, to the user based on certain criteria, right? So if you have seen the previous video, right, where we were creating like input elements uh, like text fields, we can mark those fields required, but if you mark a field required, that will always remain required. What if you want to make something required based on conditional basis, right? What if you want to have like more flexibility when you are throwing the error, right? So at that point, we can utilize the set error, okay? So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'll build a very basic form. Uh, it will contain just three or four fields, right? And then we'll try to implement all kind of a set error uh, set error scenarios that we can have okay so i'm going to put three text fields here okay so this would be our person full name and this will be email and then this will be mobile number okay so what we are going to do is like we will make this field required okay and at the same time uh, we will need to make any of these fields required so if user provide email that's fine if user provide mobile number that's fine if user provide both of them that's absolutely fine but if user don't provide both of them then we need to throw the error right so to make it this person full name required i can just simply check this checkbox and it will be required right and it will throw the standard error, error that hey this field is required but i'm not going to do that assuming that we have this kind of scenario where we cannot make this field required but it will be based on some other field data selected might be in the last or previous step okay so i'm going to keep it some in this way okay and here i'm going to put another step so it will say like we are moving to the next step nothing else okay so we want to validate this form before we move it to the system so here i'm going to look at my set error action Okay, I'll drop it here. So here I'll give this name as like full name required. You can keep it anything, whatever you want. And here I'm going to put a new element value. Okay, so you can add multiple element values. Okay, and what you will have to provide is elements that you have in your omniscript it can be step it can be an input text field or it can be anything that you have added on your omniscript so here i'm going to add person first full name okay and value i will be putting as a text person full name is required so you can have this value message okay or if you want uh, to generate a dynamic error message you can generate through the expression for value right you can bind your variables through the other fields and all those things right so you have a lot of flexibility here okay cool so i'm going to preview this so i'll click on next it throws the error right and it throws the error and now it is not allowing me to move forward to the second step at all okay so if you see this right uh, right now i have added the error uh, as soon as it is blank and even though even though if you provide the data this will still throw the error because we haven't specified if this error needs to be triggered if person full name is blank right right now it throws the error no matter what right so we need to utilize this conditional view here 
I'm going to provide personal full name equals to blank, then this should throw the error. Okay, let's go back and let's try to execute it. So click next, we got the error, I provide data, I'm able to move to the second page. So this one is straightforward, but quite useful. Okay. Similarly, you can do, you can add multiple, like for example, email, test uh, email is needed. Okay. That's it. And preview it. I'll remove that email part. I just wanted to show how it will look. So I'll click on next. You see, we got error mapping with each of the fields here, right? So you have email is needed. You have person full name is required, but that's not the right way of uh, looking at the what we are trying to achieve, right? Uh, if this was the case, right, what I would suggest we create another set error, okay? This is something that we are going to do this now. So I'll delete this and I'll, I'll put another set error here and this would be email or mobile is required. And now, now we are going to throw the error message. And now we cannot throw the error message on both of them, right? It will not look good. Eventually we can do this, right? Because we can just have email and mobile phone number that, hey, provide your email address and provide your mobile number, okay? But we are not going to do that in, uh, in that fashion uh, because we already did that, okay? So what we are going to do is, we will have a text message text block on here's email or mobile number i'd say please provide email or mobile number okay so we are going to show this message I'll put some of the coloring here. I'll put this as a red. Okay, so it, it will more look like an error. Okay, I'll put some line breaks here. Okay, so now we have this. Let's go back. And when we receive error, what we want to do is, we want to target this element rather than any input field right so let's go back and let's target or text block one okay see now because we are targeting a non-input entity right so that's just visible entity right it can be your action entity it can be your button right so literally you just need to provide element name and you can provide here something random like dot i'll just provide dot nothing else okay Let's go back and let's preview it. So if you, if you see this, right, it, you are seeing this error even though you haven't done anything and we don't want this, okay? So what we want is it should throw an error. It should show this message when we are not providing this and when we are clicking on the next, okay? So to do that, we need to do some kind of tricks here so we need to add set values okay so error i'll call it error words error variables in a nutshell and then i'll pick i create a email or mobile required flag in starting i'll keep it as a false here we will show this text if our variable is true. Okay, if it's not true, then we won't show it. And coming to this, we will throw the error, okay, right away. But also, we need to check if any of the variable is or, or any of the field are blank. So to do that, we will clone this error where's, okay, I'll move this to here. So here, 
I just delete it. Uh, okay. Here, what I will do is I'll check if email or mobile both are uh, blank or not. Okay. So here I will say email equals to equals to null and mobile number is also equals to equals to null. Okay. If that's the case, then this flag would became true. So checking email and mobile validation. Okay. And then we are setting up the flag. Nothing else we are doing here. Okay. So at this point, so far what we have done is we have created a variable uh, that we initialized as false. Then we had ma marked this as a conditional. So if the variable is true, then this will be only visible. If not, then it won't be. Okay. And then we have this, um, uh, this another set value where we are actually getting the, uh, uh, getting the like response uh, or output if any, if both of them are uh, like blank. Okay. So that's one piece. Okay. The second piece is that we should throw this message if this variable is true only okay if this variable is not true then we should not be showing it okay somehow this got deleted let me add back email should be null and mobile number should be null save so we have this and I'll, I'll going I'm going to copy this and we'll add on here so if it is true okay so basically on again reiterating first step variable initialization we will come here we will check if it needs to populate it or not if it is true then it will throw the error and it will send us back to this element okay so there is one more important thing because whenever we do this right and at the end so whatever result we will be getting here it will be boolean right but if you go back here in uh, conditional view uh, here and if you see here like uh, if you put like true and if you go back right so it says true but actually it's not uh, boolean true it's actually a string true right so if you go and edit properties at json you will able to see the data that we are having is is a, is a text right so what i will do is i will just remove the double quotes right just to make sure that this is also getting executed if it is a boolean as a true okay and similar thing that we will do here as well okay so we will edit as here and we will update it to the true okay so now if I go back and preview it, I'll provide my name here. Next, okay. It got executed and uh, the first validation was successful. So it didn't throw the error, but the next one had the error. Okay, so if I provide anything here, it will allow me to go next time. If I go back here, the error won't be there, okay similar for the mobile number i should be able to move forward but if i again blank both of them and i will receive the error right away okay so this is how you can utilize the uh, set error even though you don't need to provide this text block you can just simply provide the step as well okay so what does that mean is right what happens when you do the set error behind the scene so it try to redirect to that element or to that step where the element is available okay so even if you select this element then it will redirect to, to you to this step okay if you select this step again you will be redirected to this step okay let's say if you have more steps okay so I'll give an example what I will do is I'll put uh, another step here just to show how this things works right uh, and even though this error message is on this step uh, one and if I go here and if I say hey go to the 
step three that we have actually added on the first place okay so preview first step uh, please don't look at the numbers okay and then we have this i'll provide something and as soon as i click on next it will redirect me to back to the step three so you see we are now on the step three so so you can utilize set error at any place in the omni script that can redirect you to the any of the step wherever you want to write so if i even give an example let's say you have 10 step long omni script and on the page number 10 if there is something checkbox if user check that then user needs to provide email address and that email address was not required on the step one and you need to redirect user to fill out that email address right so user will be redirected to this step one so you can utilize the set error and the element to target uh, target the uh, redirection so that's it uh, for this video and this is going to be our last video for this series and i uh, hope you all enjoyed this entire series and uh, obviously there will be another advanced omni studio series where i will be covering all the other kind of scenarios right um, it can be some complex things and it can be how we do the deployment right so just please do subscribe uh, the channel and uh, please provide your support thank you so much